I'm Sue Enquist, the former softball coach at UCLA. I really only did one thing for 27 years, and that was coach. And in reality, I consider myself a teacher. And what was exciting about being a teacher is you're just somebody that provides information and then tries to document their progress along the way, whoever you're teaching and whoever you're leading. What I found to be really interesting through all these years of coaching and leading student athletes was there were a lot of common elements that these individuals had regarding competitive greatness. And I define competitive greatness as understanding that every minute of every day you're competing with these voices in your head about your greatness, about your best you. And through these years, I found that these people that were really close to reaching their personal greatness, their excellence, they had that voice in their head that they were aware of, because it's really two voices, strong voice and a weak voice. And they had that ability to control that weak voice. The other thing that they were really, really good at was making sure that they understood when they were in the me environment, where it's all about me as an individual, and when they were in the we environment. As we go through life, 99% of our life is really a team sport. And people that reach their personal excellence understand when they're in the me or when they're in the we environment. Because we want to be able to have that filter on to make sure that we're understanding we're participating in something that's bigger than ourselves. And the student athletes that I had an opportunity to work with really mastered that. The second thing is the rule. It's pretty simple. We call it the 33% rule. The rule is really just about awareness. The awareness of protecting that greatness that's in you. And the rule simply states this that there are a third of the people in your life that will suck the life out of you. They literally don't have the filter on. That's that person that's whining and complaining. Then you have the middle third. The middle third, they kind of blow in the wind. When things are good, they're all in. And when things get tough, that, they're the first person that says, wow, this really stinks. She or he kind of sounds like this. Ah, I love my job, I love my boss, I love my colleagues. And the minute the company struggles, they're that individual that says, this place stinks. I can't stand my boss. My colleagues, ah, I want no part of them. And then you've got top third. Probably in this room, in this area, top 1%. And this is what they're capable of doing, just like those student athletes that I was able to coach at UCLA. You wake up in the morning and you do the toe test. Your toes hit that floor and you make a decision in that moment that I'm making this a killer day. But you wake up and you're like, all of a sudden I don't feel that good. That's right, not every day you're gonna be 100%. I get that, we get that. But can you give 100% of what you have when you do your toe test every day? So let's say you're 60% today. Give me 100% of that 60. And instead of just trying to plod through your day, why don't you split your day in half and say, you know what, I only have to get through the first half and I'm gonna give 100% of that 60. Then you start the second half, because the morning may have been tough, you got the afternoon to start fresh. So they have that ability to do the toe test. The next thing that they do is they control that weak voice in their head that I talked about earlier. Remember the strong voice and the weak voice. They have that ability to control that strong voice and it takes over in the day. It doesn't give that weak voice the opportunity to engage in excuses or justifications. Because you know what, on a daily basis, your weak voice, it negotiates down your excellence. The next thing that that individual is capable of doing is they understand the doorknob and the gate. In life, you're reaching out, grabbing doorknobs all during the day. And they understand, on the other side of that door, is it about me or is it about the team? And they have that awareness when they're in a team environment, 
and when they're in the individual environment. Because there's only two. It's either all about me or it's all about the team. And people that are very close to reaching their personal excellence on a day-to-day -day basis understand the doorknob on the other side. Is that a team that I have to be a part of? Or is it all about me? And I get to go ahead and just focus on myself. And in that, I've got my toe test. I've got my performance behavior markers. That's the doorknob. That's a marker. Every day you're going through a door, check yourself. And when you get to that other side, you know that you're going to go ahead and support something bigger than yourself. So you basically have these two big areas in your life. You've got the rule, and that's the 33% rule. Bottom third, middle third, and top third. And then you've got your game. Everybody has their game. For me, it was coaching, teaching, and leading. But everybody has their game. You've got the mom game, the dad game. You've got people here tonight that were excellent at photography or organic cooking. Whatever it may be, everybody has their game. And if you can remember that every game that you take part in has three fundamental principles. The first principle is preparation. Yeah, I know. Everybody's got to prepare. I get it. But what if I said to you tonight, don't worry about all the preparation that you have to do in the next week. Why don't you just simply say, I got to get 1% better today. I just got to get 1% better in my preparation for that job, that event, or that project that's due. And in that, you simply say baby steps. You document your success. Little baby steps to document along the way. Preparation, the first fundamental in our game, is simply anticipation to the end. So when I think about my game, everybody's got a game, I'm going to think about preparation. Baby steps, 1% better every day. The next fundamental principle in the game is I got to love. I got to love the game. I got to love my game. And I know, you know what? Everybody's got to love their game. I get that. But what people that are very, very good at regarding competitive excellence, they love their game when it's hard. They love the game when they're struggling. They love the game when the odds are against them. You're down by two in the bottom of the seven. All of a sudden you got a big project that's now due tomorrow when you thought you had a week. And who are the people out there at the end of the day that say, let's get this done. They love their game even in the struggle. And last of the three components is honor. We're gonna honor our game. And honor can take on so many definitions for people, but this is what it means for me in my game. Honoring the game means every single day that I wake up, I remind myself the game doesn't know. The game has no memory. So maybe we had success yesterday. Today, the game has no memory, so I start fresh. And I go out there focused. I go out there really, really embracing those little baby steps in my preparation. I know I have to love the struggle, even if I had success yesterday. Honoring the game simply means this. The game doesn't care about your excellence yesterday. It doesn't care how old you are. The game doesn't care how much money's in your pocket, where you're from, what color your skin is. What's so great about honoring the game is if you go out there knowing that you've put in the work, you've put in those investments in the preparation phase, you've loved it when it's hard, you're gonna be able to eventually get those paybacks in honoring the game. The other part of honoring the game which helps and for us at UCLA, what helped, you have freshmen on the team, you have seniors on the team. We spent a lot of time talking about if you honor the game and you've put in all this work and you document that success, the game doesn't know how old you are. So you go out there and you execute like a veteran. The game doesn't know you're a freshman. Today you start a new job. Your new job doesn't know you're a freshman. And if I can get you to honor the game, knowing the game doesn't know how old you are, 
you go out there and you embrace your fundamentals, you will be judged on only two things, your effort and your attitude. Just two things when it comes to your game. Whether you're brand new at your game or you've just started your game. Two things, your effort and your attitude. So you have the game that has three components, preparation, love, and honoring. And then you've got your rule that's gonna protect your competitive greatness because there are people out there that can suck the life out of you. Those are bottom third. Code B3. You got middle third, and then you've got top third. And I believe in this room here today, we've got top third and probably top 1%. You go out there every single day preparing, you go out there loving it, and you understand how you honor the game. And that's what we're really here to do, is we're here to focus on our personal excellence. But it's competitive every day because you've got that strong voice and that weak voice, and they're competing every single day, 24-7. Because excellence doesn't take a time out. 33% rule is your fuel. Remember your game and the principles that hold it up. Preparation, love, and honor. And you do that, at the end of the day, you're going to be peaceful. It worked. I believe in you. Enjoy. And once again, be your best you. That's good enough. Thank you.